human trafficking is the fastest criminal organization in the world. No, these are not exaggerated facts, and this is not a shocking statement. It's the truth. What we see that happened in the book of Exodus, where a nation was in bondage to another nation. What we see was happening in the United States and all around the world, where people were enslaved based on color. Today, there is more slaves on this earth than at any other time in the world. The Walk Free Foundation's 2016 Global Slavery Index estimates 45.8 million people are in some sort of slavery in 167 countries. And 2 million out of these 45 million slaves are children. We have more slaves today than at any other time in the history of the world. We've seen this in the United States with Jeffrey Epstein having his own island that locals called Pedophilia Island, where celebrities and politicians and royalties would come to indulge in their lusts with victims of human sex trafficking. When I watched the movie Nefarious, where a psychiatrist was meeting with a demon or a legion, and the legion said this about our culture. James, the average high school graduate reads at a sixth grade level. You have basketball players making 30 million a year decrying racism, all while wearing sneakers made from slave labor. Now here's something for you. Right now, your world currently has 40 million slaves. More than the Romans had at the height of their empire. You wanna know the best part though? Half of those, half are sex slaves, James. What is human trafficking? Let's hear an answer from somebody who actually works in rescuing children. There's a film that was made about his story of him working for the government and then quitting the job to go and rescue children from human sex trafficking. Let me begin with what does trafficking mean? So trafficking is slavery. That's what it is. And it comes in different forms. Mostly it's slave labor. That's the most prominent sex slavery and, and organ harvesting. And there, there are, this is estimated by U.S. State Department, the U.N., every entity. They estimate about 30 million people who are currently in one of those forms of slavery. That's more slaves than ever existed in the history of the world. You could add up all the slaves that were abused during that 350 year period of the transatlantic slave trade, add them all up and there's still more alive today than all of those combined. So that's what it is, is $150 billion a year business. Okay, so I understand the work slave and the sex slave. I don't understand the organ harvesting. So the organ harvesting is, it's, it's, it's more difficult to find, uh, but it's, it is prominent. Uh, we work, for example, in, in uh, Uganda and other um, East African nations where it is actually uh, like a witchcraft. Um, and that's the motive is they actually take children and they'll cut, they'll use their blood and sell their blood. And as this sounds like a horror movie, like this can't be true, but it is absolutely true. They'll cut their genitalia off and sell it, and people will hang, hang that above their, um, their businesses for good luck, because the gods of some sort will, will, will bless the business. Um, we have several children that we care for in East Africa uh, who were rescued mid-torture. So we're, we're, we're helping them with um, restoring their, their, their bodies. That's crazy. Not only there's a human trafficking and issue with sex, labor, but also organ harvesting for the purpose of witchcraft and probably also black markets. Actually, Angel Studios have made a movie about this man, Tim Ballard, who was working for the U.S. government and then he quits his job to go and rescue children from global sex traffickers. He actually uncovers during one of his missions a young boy, a seven-year-old boy that he rescues who was kidnapped and the young boy asks Ballard to find his sister who was also kidnapped. And then Ballard decides to devote his life to rescue children. And he, I think about over a hundred kids that they rescued. I had the opportunity to watch this film with my wife. It's a very somber and very difficult film to watch. It's not a graphic film like Taken or, or other films. And it, the fact that it's based on a true story and one of the lead actors actually is Jim Gaviezel who played in The Passion, played Christ. And so let's take, take a moment and watch this trailer. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? It is the fastest growing international crime network that the world has ever seen. It has already passed the illegal arms trade, and soon it's going to pass the drug trade. Because you can sell a bag of 
told Kate one time with a child. Five to ten times a day. God's children are not for sale. How long have you been doing this? Twelve years now. How many pedophiles you got? 288. How many kids you found? For Homeland Security, you know we can't go off rescuing Honduran kids in Colombia. Which means she'll disappear for good. Imagine walking into a room right now, seeing an empty bed. What we do? You quit your job, and you go and rescue those kids. So at this moment, she could be a block down the road, or she could be in Moscow, Bangkok, L.A. She's a major operator. It's all rebel territory. No one goes in. Not the army, not the police, not us. What if this was your daughter? There's no Marine unit coming. You're on your own. This job tears you to pieces. And this is my one chance to put those pieces back together. When God tells you what to do, you cannot hesitate. This is a very powerful film. It's not a gospel film in the sense that at the end you have a gospel presentation but it does show importance of purpose and it does elevate the need for us to begin to sound the alarm as well as speak up for human injustice that is happening right in front of our nose this is happening also in our nation not only at Super Bowls or big events, but where I live in Tri-Cities, we have this event where once a year, about 70,000 people come to Tri-Cities for three days. And there are reports of people coming that are sex slaves, as well as people being kidnapped. And this is not just some far-fetched stories. Anywhere where there is greed, anywhere where there is lust, there is going to be that human trafficking, sex trafficking, but we can stop it. We can rise against it as Christians. I want to encourage you, if you are able, go and watch this film so you can be educated as well as encouraged to look for those people that need this help. There are a few things that we can do today to help weaken or to help fight this crime and this injustice that happens right in front of our nose. First thing is we need to stop watching porn. We must understand is that porn is a very important part of human trafficking. In nine countries, about 49% of porn is made by people who are in prostitution and who are slaves in those industries. We must understand is that if we are fighting human trafficking and watching porn, we are actually supporting the human trafficking. Because what fuels human trafficking is the demand for porn, demand for sex, demand for prostitution. And many of the prostitutes are the ones that are human trafficked. And so if we want to overcome this in our generation, we have to stop at the root. And the root is consumption of pornography. The second thing is we have to raise the value for human life. It's cheaper to buy a human being today than it was many years ago. The average cost of a human being long time ago was equivalent to about $40,000. Today, you can buy a human being for less than $100. Human beings are trafficked because it's a very profitable business. When you traffic a human being, they can keep on making money because they are reusable. When somebody sells drugs, person used drugs one time and that's it. But when a human being is trafficked, they can be used five up to 10 times a day. And especially if they're children, they could be used for many, many years. If we don't value human life, and I'm not talking about just the human life of children or even adults who are in slavery, enforced slavery or forced labor slavery or sex trafficking slavery, but it has to start with valuing human life in the womb. Valuing human life from the womb to the tomb. Why? Because we were made in the image of God. We didn't come from monkeys. We did not come. We're not animals. 
We are not just the glorified animals. We are made in the image and likeness of God and we have value in the eyes of God because we carry the image of God. If we don't value human beings in the womb and throughout their life, we can't stop human trafficking. Number three, we must pray for victims. Every 30 seconds, a new victim becomes a slave of human trafficking. And the percentage of people coming out of that lifestyle is about 1.1% which is extremely low. A lot of people don't come out from that lifestyle because their lords or their gods or people who hold them hostage, many times they hold them hostage until somebody breaks in or until they get arrested or until God intervenes. Israel was in Egypt for hundreds of years. Israelites cried out, but God sent Moses. Something we can do as Christians is pray for people that are in slavery today, in sex slavery, people that are in labor slavery, that God will send a deliverer and that God will deliver them and set them free, that their captors will be captured, that they will be defeated and that they will face judgment. And the fourth thing that you can do to help and that is to get involved. One of them is go watch this film, take your family and educate them as well as you can get involved with ministries and organizations and I'm pretty sure your city has one, ours does. And you can get involved when they do some kind of a campaign or 5k walk or run and they raise funds to help these women and sometimes even men who are in this lifestyle and for them to be rescued. The last thing that you can do to help stop human trafficking is to become aware and watch for the signs of people that are in bondage around you. Yes, it happens more common than you realize. I've heard stories of people being even in a youth group where the boyfriend would traffic them or neighbors where they would be living in the house locked under a threat that their family will be hurt or their identification would be stolen or they came as immigrants promised to have some kind of a job opportunity but in reality they found themselves in a very difficult situation where they now are being trafficked for sex or for some other dubious activities. Here are some of the things that you can be aware of. This is not a thorough list. There's other websites that can offer that but this is just some of the things that I found on different websites that fight human trafficking. If somebody is fearful, anxious, depressed, submissive, tense, nervous or paranoid, shows signs of substance abuse or addiction, shows signs of poor hygiene, malnourishment and fatigue, shows signs of physical and sexual abuse, physical restraint, confinement or torture, has few or no personal possessions, is frequently monitored, is not in control of their own money, financial records or bank account, is not in control of their own ID, meaning somebody keeps their ID, is not allowed to speak for themselves and there's a third party that may insist on being present or translate, claims of visiting and inability to clarify where they're at, where they're staying or their address, lack of knowledge of whereabouts and do not know what city he or she is in, appeal to have lost sense of time, shares scripted, confusing and inconsistent stories. When you see people like that, sometimes all you gotta do is step in and ask them if they need help and call the police and other numbers that are below this video. We all can do something as help. Some of you may say, well, Pastor Vlad, why are you touching about this thing? Because Jesus died for every human being and this is not right that in 2023 we have more slaves today than we have had any other time in the history of the world. And I think that we all can do something. It could start with you going watching the film, with you saying no to pornography, you putting value on human life, you praying for the victims, you getting involved and you also watching for the signs, people around you who might be in that need, who need you to be like their Moses, who will step in and help them to be rescued. Thank you for watching this video. Go ahead and share this video with other people so that we can raise awareness about this issue in our generation.